Hey there everyone, Hitesh here and I noticed some of you are still not aware of my website. Why is it so? Let me introduce you with a quick second. We will come to scope chaining, we will discuss and have a lot of fun there. Just a quick second. So visit learncodeonline.in. We have got a lot of courses at very affordable prices, bundles and some mock tests which are absolutely free to prepare for companies and you're going to enjoy them. They are super amazing and free. Enough of that. Now let's go back here. Okay, not here actually, uh, on to presentation. Okay, so we have talked a bit about the variable object, which is a guy who collects the information about my code, has a different scoping system, global scoping, execution, context scoping, and a bunch of other things, which was pretty fun. Now let's come back on to another guy, which is scope chain. For scope chain, I'm gonna tell you a story and just remember this and you will never ever have any problem in JavaScript about scope chain. So the story is about a small kid. So this blue guy here at the very, sm at the very center is a guy who is a kid and he got a popsicle or in other terms is, ha is having an ice cream. So this guy can eat his own ice cream but it, he, if somehow he doesn't have the ice cream, he can ask the ice cream to this orange guy. If the orange guy doesn't even have ice cream, he can ask to the purple guy. But according to the moral situation of the society, if this, this blue guy has got the popsicle, then he can eat his own, own popsicle. But here's the problem. The orange guy, if he's having his own popsicle, he can eat it, but he cannot ask the smaller guy for the popsicle. It's not morally correct. The orange guy can ask for popsicle to this big guy, but it cannot, it can never ask the popsicle for the, with the smaller guy. And that is the one thing you should always remember. You can ask for help or popsicle to the guy who is bigger than you, but taking something from the guy who is smaller than you is not really morally correct. So just remember this and that's all what you need to know about the scope chaining. Okay, how does this actually comes on to the scope chaining and how we can use it? So let's create a few examples and write some amazing code. Let's just say we are having a name and the name is, of course, my name, Hitesh. Okay, now what is going to happen when we are gonna print this one? So I'm gonna write the line number as well so that you can get more clarity here. So I'm gonna say line number three this time and we're gonna print up the name. Now this is a very, very easy code. Shouldn't be having any problem in this line of code. Let's go ahead and run this one in 03 and this file is 05, there we go. So it gives me at line number three, there is a Hitesh. Okay, nice and easy. Now I define a method which says, uh, say name, and this is going to be a method. So let's go ahead and say function. Yeah, I call the function sometime method, so don't worry too much on that part. I go ahead and say that this is gonna be a simple log statement, so there we go. And I say, what is the name? Now, I will also add up a line number here so that it gets much more clear. And this is line number six. There we go. Save this. Now, what do you think this line number six is gonna print up? Remember, this is a smaller guy because it's a function. Another execution context got loaded up and the reason why I call the global execution context in the big block and rest of them in the smaller one because that's a smaller kid. So. This kid doesn't have ice cream. Me, I don't have ice cream. So from where I can get the ice cream? From the global scope, the bigger guy. When I run this code here, I can see that line number three, ah, we never call this one. My bad, sorry. Okay, let's go ahead and run this this time. Okay, so now this time, line number three says Hitesh and line number six says Hitesh because I can ask for the ice cream to the above guy and whoever the ice cream he's gonna have, he's gonna give me the same. Now notice here, something different. So we're gonna declare a var name and that name is gonna be this time, Mr. H. Now we are at line number seven this time, again. Let's go ahead and run this. Now since both of you have got your own ice creams, you can eat your own ice creams. This line number three has got an ice cream from line number one or the name, so we are consuming that. But in this scope, we have got our own ice cream. So we don't need to go and ask for somebody for the ice cream because we got our own ice cream, our own variable. So that's why we are gonna use this one here. Now, one thing as a side note, I would like to mention about the JavaScript, which is a bit weird. I totally found it weird, but it's not that weird. It's just the language design. 
Remember in one of the video, I told you that this is a scope. Right now, this is an empty scope, but this is a scope. And this is true for the global scale, like for entire world level. Whenever we want to call up a scope, this is how a scope is being created. We have seen this syntax in if and else, in switch and case, you're gonna see that in for loops, we haven't talked about them, but you're gonna see them a lot. In the function declaration, we also see these curly braces. Curly braces technically means a scope, but in the world of JavaScript, what you are going to notice that when you write these things like if statement, this truly doesn't really is considered as a scope. Yes, surely it is a scope, it is a scope, don't get me wrong there, but it's not truly considered as a scope in the world of JavaScript, but rather the only scope that we consider is actually the element which is tied toward the function. So if I just say ABC, just like this, now this is considered as a scope, but not for the other like switch and if and else case. And this is a reference coming up from the memory reservation and call of the memory, but still, you can loosely say that yes, whenever there's a curly braces, there is scope. Okay, enough of the side information. Coming on. So this time we got the candy part. So this time we are having that this blue guy and this orange guy both have their separate candies and they're working. But we need to go one more level deep so that you can understand it. Okay. We can actually declare function whenever and wherever we like. So I'm going to create another function, but notice I'm inside the say name. So I'm going to say say name two. There we go. And this guy says that log me the name. So we're going to add line number as well. So we're going to say line number and this one is actually 10. So line number 10 and then we are going to add a name here. Now notice here say name two. nobody called you up yet. So we're going to call this one here. So we're going to say say name two. There we go. We called you up. Okay, now notice very, very cleanly here. We are having this purple scope, the top, the big guy. But now notice, from where this guy is gonna get name, it's gonna just ask the name just above to it. So, say name or say name two doesn't have access to this name, so it's gonna ask the name to just above guy. So here, we have an access of name. That's why it is gonna print this one. But, but, if this was not available here, then it will go above, one level up that yes, you can actually ask to above guy. Remember, you can go as much as above, but you cannot ask to the lower guys that, hey, give me your ice cream. That's not correct. But you can ask elders. If your parents are not giving you ice cream, you can ask your grandparents and they're gonna give you the ice cream. So this is what it's most important thing. Let's go ahead and run this. So it's actually technically line number 11 now. This is seven and this is three, correct? So let's go ahead and run this. So notice it says Hitesh at line number three. At line number seven, it says Mr. H. And here it says Mr. H again, my. Why am I saying my? It should be Mr. Okay, there we go. My bad. Okay, I'm gonna run this one again because I want to. There we go, now it's good. But what happens when I just go ahead and say another name variable and I call this one as uh, Mr. HC, my initials. This is technically line number 12 now. Now what is going to happen? Everybody got their own ice cream, so everybody will grab it up here. There we go, Mr. H and Mr. HC. Okay, just to give you another fact that yes, we can drill as many level as we want in the up, up direction. We're gonna comment this one, we're gonna comment this one, and now technically, this will go above and we'll say, hey, say name, do you got any information about name? He's gonna say, no, I don't know what that is. And it's gonna just go up and we'll just grab the name from Hitesh. So every single time you're gonna grab Hitesh, Hitesh and Hitesh there. Okay, so this is quite fun. And remember the story about this popsicle or the ice cream and you're gonna always grab the ice cream and you will never ever face any problem in the scope chaining if you remember this example, which I'm pretty sure you're gonna never forget. So that's it for this one. Hit that subscribe and let's catch up in the next one.